What's up? What's up? What's going on, everybody? How is everyone doing? Woo! It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I hope wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you are doing it in love and light. I hope all is well. All right, you guys. It has been a minute since I've done a Facebook Live video, and I felt like today was the day. You know, if you're an empath or if you're just sensitive to the things going on in this earthly realm, sometimes you gotta just pull the shades down for a little bit and go back and go within and regroup your energy. Hey, Cindy, thanks for watching. Hi, Taisha, thanks for watching. Hey, Rosa, thank you everybody who is joining. If you are joining, let me know if my audio is okay, if you guys can hear me. I've been trying to record this video and Facebook has been acting up a little bit. We are still coming, we're coming towards the end, but we're still in Mercury retrograde and it has been a challenge for your girl for the past 30 minutes. So please let me know if you guys can hear me okay. Be sure to comment down um, your zodiac sign and where are you repping from? If you're like me, you're at home because that's all I can do. I'm here in California and um, there's not much to do out there in the world. So I'm chilling and that's why I wanted to connect with everybody else. Hi Mayat. Hey Rosa, what's up girl? Uh, hi Stephanie, thank you so much. If you guys are returning, you've been following me for a while. Sending love, sending love to everybody. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining. Please share this video on your timeline, in your groups, with someone that you care about. You can tell by the title, we are about to talk about five magical tips for your petition writing. Because let's face it, it's a house party, right? So what else do we all have to do other than manifest our goals and our destiny? Um, thank you, Rosa. Thank you so much. Hey, Keisha. What's up? Okay, Leo, home in Chicago. Hello, I'm home in LA. Please drop your zodiac sign and where you chilling at, because let's face it, we're all at home. Well, most of us are. Hey, Cindy. Um, it feels so good to, con I miss you guys. It really does feel so good to connect with everybody. I got to get back on Facebook Live a little bit more. I've been kind of, I've been, I've had the covers over my head and that's just because my energy hasn't been right. And, you know, when I come and I connect with you guys, I want to come to you with valuable rituals, valuable jewels, things that I can help you with and really be a service to the community. So forgive me that I've been MIA, but I am back. I love all of you and I really appreciate you guys. If you're returning, if you're new here, my name is Jasmine Atten, Mystic at the Crossroads, and I help people learn how to tap into their magical energy through the beautiful art of candle magic to manifest the life that they want and it's all one ritual away and guess what magic is unlimited even in the times that are going on right now all right so as you guys can tell excuse me why i address my camera i've had lots of technical difficulties but that's okay we're gonna work through them don't worry about it we're going to talk about five magical tips for writing an effective petition you know why because what else does anyone else have to do right now other than practicing your magic and you want to know something this is the best time for you to be doing rituals. This is the best time, you know why? Because the energy around us is calm. The energy is still. Now I don't know where you are, but the streets in LA are empty. Nobody's running around. People are at home spending time with their kids. People are at home reflecting. People are at home are chilling. And instead of being all up on your PlayStation and on your Xbox and on your dating sites, why don't you take a little bit of time to go within and work your magic okay now i did put up a post the other day that all the witchy stores and all the botanicas are closed this is like my lifeline the candle store is like a respirator for me and they're all closed so what does a girl do when there's no candles that's going to be the video later tonight i'm gonna get back to you on that but in the meantime what you can do is write a successful petition and you want to stay tuned to this video to the end because I've got some bonus tips to help you guys out. I've got some jewels I'm going to drop on you. Y'all know I come through bearing gifts, right? Come on now. This is what we're talking about. So, part one, two, if you don't have any candles to work with, you can still write a very successful petition to manifest the things that you want. And you want to harness this energy. The moon is going in Taurus in two days. That's the money sign. And, you know, we're not going to mention all the stuff that's going on, but everybody right now is focusing on their finances, their prosperity, and their stability, at least through the month of April and May, and whatever else is going to pan out. So, are you ready? I was telling y'all, y'all that came to class number four, get your money house in order. I was telling y'all way back when, before tax season comes, something's about to jump off, and it's important to make sure that you are up on your ritual so that you can continue to manifest the prosperity that you want. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. Please share this video. 
Hey, Stephanie, thank you so much. We are doing very well. So let's jump into this very quickly. Five magical tips for writing a successful petition and why you should be practicing your magic tonight. So tip number one, I feel like a broken record because I say this all the time, but it's easier said than done. And I have to remind myself of this also is getting clarity on what it is that you want. Clarity, clarity, clarity. And I'll tell you something. It's hard to figure out what it is that you want when you don't really know thyself. It's like, oh, hold on. Sorry, somebody was just calling me as I'm shooting this video. But you have to know thyself. And knowing what is it that you want? Do you want a new home? Do you want a new career? Do you want a new partner? Do you want financial freedom, stability? Do you want your business to excel? Do you want to start a new business? Getting clear, I mean, dissecting this down to its itsy bitsy molecule, okay? Now, sometimes people will come to me and be like, you know what? I don't really know what I want. I don't know what my spiritual destiny is. I don't know where I'm supposed to be going. I don't even know what direction I'm in. And guess what I'm here to tell you? That's okay too, you know what? You don't have to know. If you don't know, you don't have to know. Had you told me six years ago when I was seven years ago when I was working in a very high-end Beverly Hills medical office that I was going to take my personal practice of candle magic share it publicly I would have looked at you like you're crazy I ain't telling nobody this I ain't giving away my secrets um but here I am now so you have to also be open to the universe laying out each brick in front of you open to the universe kind of setting out your pathway so it's okay if you don't know you don't have to but you do have to ask for that clarity and guidance so first and foremost tip number one <laughs> being very clear clarity in I want X Y and Z or clarity in I don't really know what I want I want you to show me hold on y'all this camera okay so y'all know I'm a one woman show and if this tripod doesn't work then I'm gonna just pick you up and we gonna do it like that but Coming from a place of certainty and sincerity. The universe is unlimited in its abundance. Do not let what you are seeing happen in front of you cloud your judgment or force you into this fake belief system that there is a lack or scarcity or that you cannot have and you cannot manifest and there is not enough. That's bullshit. So take out a handy dandy. I'm old school, y'all, so some of you are very technical and like type stuff on the computer. I don't do that. I got a book and a pen. Write down in certainty what it is that you want. Don't worry about where it's coming from. That little inner voice, that limiting character is going to be like, you can't manifest $25,000 in the month of April. That's unheard of. Fuck that voice. Just write it down. Whatever it is that you want, write it down and put it in an in ink form and be very clear on what it is that you want. So if you just applied for a job and you know you want that job, write down the name of the company. Write down the hours, the salary, the days of the week that you want to work, the distance from your from where you're, you know, what your commute's gonna be. If you want to move into a new house, print out a picture. Maybe it's not the place, maybe you haven't found the place. Print out a picture of the house or the apartment or the condo. Print out a print out, excuse me, I'm moving. My brain is moving faster than my body can keep up with. Print out a floor plan, okay? If you are looking to purchase a new vehicle, print out or go find a toy car at Dollar Tree. You got a dollar. Go get a tangible item that represents what it is that you're trying to work with and put that on your petition or put that on your altar on your sacred space. If you don't have an altar, you should have one. Um, that's a whole nother video and those of you that have altars truly understand why I say you need to have an altar space set up But this will help you with your petition write out all the details Okay, if you don't know the details then that's okay. You can always in your petition um, I like to put in my petition if I'm not certain I will just leave it and just ask the universe to provide for me What's in my best interest? Okay tip number two Pick your tools wisely. Yeah, your tools do make a difference. Now, here's what I've learned over the years. And those of you that have been, we've been friends and family, we've been loving on each other for years. You used to see in my old videos, I always wrote my petitions out on brown paper bag or on um, parchment paper, which is totally fine. 
If you want to keep it old school, real traditional to what the witches used to do back in the day, they use parchment paper. They use things that were very natural. Let me explain to you why. It is believed that the more natural the tool that you're working with, the more of the energy that you have that's going to contribute to what you're asking for, okay? However, we modern day witches, at least I am, I don't see anything wrong with writing a petition out on a piece of lined paper. It still came from a tree. And paper bags are processed too. So, but if you want to go old school with your parchment paper, your paper bag, your dove's blood or dragon's blood ink, that's totally fine. But I don't, in my opinion, I haven't seen a difference or a more effective in my rituals doing it that way versus doing it this way. So just keep it simple. So piece of paper ink you want to get an ink pen i do not write petitions in pencil that's just how i feel pencils are not permanent and i am solidifying this from the universe as above so below so it's going down in ink because that is permanent and these are the things that i want um something else i will show you guys is when you're writing your petitions you see this this is my little bag of colored pens from dollar tree and my brain, I'm a little OCD with things. So I write my petitions with the color that coincides with what I am working on. So if I'm doing a money spell, I got my green pen cracking. If I'm doing a love spell, I got my red pen cracking. If I'm doing removing blockages, I got my orange. Yellow for success, black for banishing, blue for peace or communication and so forth and so on. Do you have to get that intricate? Mm, you don't, does it help? I think it does, but I'll leave that up to your discretion. And it's fun, so if you are someone, I'm very creative, I'm artsy, I'm a writer, um, I'm an artist, so for me, this helps me visualize. This to me makes my petition come alive when I'm writing things in color, when I'm putting sigils, when I'm putting planetary symbols, when I'm writing my Pisces sigil on there, to me, that paper now it's vibrating and it's vibrating with energy and there's colors and that's just kind of how I roll. You don't have to do that, but I promise you, if you did, you'd see a difference than just a boring old black and white piece of paper. Tip number three, always, I stress this, always start your petitions off from gratitude. And if you don't know how to do that, just write the word thank you with your name at the top, and then go into writing what it is that you want. Um, the universe does not recognize words of negation. The universe does not know the words no, want, need, can I, don't. All the universe knows is if you think it or you speak it, its job is to deliver it. Um, Keisha says, I write mine on Joss paper oh jasper paper what's jasper paper i'm curious I, I don't know what jasper paper is but that sounds fly so please let me know i get it from my ancestors money stack okay okay i got you i'm following there's always a few blank pieces in the stack oh i also use color okay so kesha can you tell me is it from your like ancestor money are you writing it on the blank papers in the back I want to make sure I understand you correctly. That's a bonus tip. She just dropped some major jewels on y'all, something I didn't even know. So thank you for sharing my love. And if you could clarify that, because, yeah, your girl's going to be writing a petition tonight. So thank you. Um, anyway, pick your tools. Pick your tools wisely. Um, yes, so back to starting from a place of gratitude. Attitude of gratitude, right? I like to start my petitions with I... Jasmine Atten. I'm so happy and grateful for, and then I'll list the things because remember when you're writing a petition, you're writing in present tense. You're writing as if what you're asking for has already manifested. You will already have it. You are claiming it because technically it's already yours. It's sitting in the queue. You know what I mean? It's like when you waiting on a check in the mail, you know, it's coming. You just waiting on it to come. You just chilling, it's gonna be in the mailbox. So it's already yours, you just need to claim it. You feel me? Um, another way to start your petitions is, hold on, I wrote this one down because y'all know I can go on and on and on. Um, I am so thankful for, or I am open to receiving, or thank you so much for giving me, 
or I have, like the words I am, I have received the new 2020, I don't know, Volkswagen Beetle. I have been hired at Macy's working 45 hours a week at $27 an hour. Whatever it is, you write it down and you claim it like it is yours. That's how you make your petition. It's like a, it's like you taking a magnet and you go on out and you're drawing the things that you want into you. This, it's very simple, I promise you. And the thing that happens to us people is we overthink stuff. A lot of people, when I have clients come that come here, sit down with me in person, I'll do exactly what I'm doing with y'all. I'll give them a pen and paper and say, here, write down what you want. And they say, well, what do I write? Well, what do you want? Just write down what you want. It's that simple. You just want to make sure that you are using words that are already affirming and confirming that it's yours. You're not asking. Well, you are asking, but you're not needing. You're not wanting and you're not begging. You're just claiming. If somebody put it this way. Somebody sends you some money through Western Union. You go up to Western Union, you fill out the piece of paper, you put your name, your whatever the information is on there, you hand it to the person, and you go to Western Union because you know that you are expecting, you got a hundred dollars sitting in Western Union that's coming. You're not asking them, can you please give me my hundred dollars? No, here's my paper, here's my name, this is where it's coming from, give me my money. That's the same thing as writing your petitions. Just like I tell people, when you go online and you order from Amazon, do you call Amazon and say, well, can I, I need, and can you please, I really want, can, I really want you to send me. No, you just place your order and you wait for it to come. It's the same thing. Tip number four. I don't know if this is a tip. This could be a whole separate video. And I say this all the time, but tangible items on your workspace, again, you want to manifest a house? Go get a toy house. You want to manifest a car? Get a toy car. Put an airplane. Put it. Put some plane tickets. Well, none of us may be flying for a while, but when we do, <laughs> when we do decide to travel again, put a picture of a passport up there if you don't have a passport. Put some credit cards. Oh, let me show you guys what I got in the mail. Now, y'all know I just be telling all y'all I'm a business. I don't really care because I love you guys and whatever. I just got a pre-approval for a credit card in the mail. I haven't had a credit card since I was 19. I am 34. I've been working on my credit and I now I, I don't I'm not going to call these people because I know how my spending habits are. But you know what I did with this? I put it on my altar over here under my money candle. And I'm gonna just let it sit and marinate there because it is a symbolic essence of having a unlimited credit line from the universe. Quite frankly, I don't want their little credit card. I don't want their, I want a $2 million credit line, not a $200 credit line, so they can keep that. But I drew an extra zero on that piece of paper, and now it's on my altar, and I'm gonna let it sit there and marinate for a couple of months. So when you get those things in the mail, that's what you do with them. Print out those checks from the, um, what's the website? Somebody help me. Y'all know, the Bank of the Universe, the secret checks, Somebody, I don't know who, but one of y'all got an old checkbook sitting around in a drawer somewhere. Write yourself out a check for whatever amount of money you need. Keep checks on your altar. P put a check for the car note. Put a check for the rent. Put a check, put a paycheck on there. A lot of you are sitting at home and things are happening. Put a paycheck on there. Put a check for the light bill, whatever it is, and put those on the altar. Am I making sense? Please comment down below if this is making sense. Thank you. Hey, Judith, I love you too. All right, tip number five. This is the important one. And people are really surprised when I say this and I think to myself, hmm, you have to, hold on. You have to read your petitions daily. I wrote this out this morning. I'm not going to get too close because there's some personal things on here. But you see it's written in green, so clearly this is for prosperity. I... Actually, no, I wrote this out last night. Needless to say, every morning I come over to my altar. I redid my altar. I sit at it now. And I read my petition. And what I will show you, I'm going to just do this, is I put the little Jupiter sigil 
in the corner, okay? I read, I read my petition every single day. I say, I recite my prayers and my affirmations. I burn ancestor money on a daily basis. It does not take a lot of time. It does not take 30 and 40 minutes. It really doesn't. The ritual, I did the ritual yesterday, but I'm putting my energy into it. And the reason why I do that is because I'm burning seven day candles. I'll show you guys something else. Every day that you have a candle burning is every day you're supposed to be at your altar. So someone asked me last week, which was a fantastic question. And I don't know if she's watching, but she inboxed me asking, am I supposed to do the ritual every day? Or am I supposed to light the candles and just let them burn? You're supposed to perform the ritual, light your candle, and every day that your candle is going, reaffirm what it is that you're asking for. If you're lighting a candle and you're walking by your altar and you're just letting it burn, you're just burning a candle and you're wasting your money. The reason why it's called a practice is you have to put energy into it daily. If your ritual says three days, that means you're sitting at your altar for three days. If it says seven days, then you're sitting at your altar. Seven day candle means seven days. Now, now that all the witchy stores are closed, I had to improvise. I had to make my own money candle. So this is my Dollar Tree. <laughs> this is my Dollar Tree improvised money candle. Don't laugh at me and my craftiness, but you know. That cost me about three bucks right there. And I have a craft box, so I added some bedazzles on there. Um, Bianca says, can you share what kind of ancestor money you use as there are some that don't burn good? Um, I'm not sure which ones you're working with. In my experience, the ones that I've used have all burned pretty well. I have, let me see. Hold on. Don't go anywhere. I have... I burn all of it, really. And I know a lot, there's a lot of people that know way more about ancestor money than I do. Some, I know some of them are for deity. Some of them are for gods and goddesses. I don't know the difference. I just burn it all. I've got these. I've got gold bars. I had gold bars. The traditional ones that a lot of you are used to working with. Um, and then I've got these, and I quite honestly... Math was never my subject. That's why I didn't get into nursing school. So I don't even know. I can't count this high, but I know that's a lot of zeros. So that's big money. So <laughs> those are the ones that I burned. But you can burn any ancestor money that you come across. And if they don't light that well, um, I don't know why they wouldn't light. I really don't know if it's maybe it's the quality of paper that it's being printed on. I'm not really sure. But you'll find something that works for you. Okay. Bonus tip, because this video, I'm trying to keep this short. I don't want to bore you guys. Um, disposing of your petition. What do you do with your petition when your candles are done? Do you keep it? Do you throw it out? What do you do with it? For me, now I tell you guys, I burn my candles until what I ask for. Uh, hey, Roxy. Hey, girl. Um, hi, Patricia. I burn my candles until everything on my list or everything that I've petitioned for has been granted. Um, and I'll allow you to use your own discretion for this. When everything that I've asked for has manifested, I burn the petition. I just light it and I burn it in the same little container that I burn my ancestor money. And I always leave an, leave an offering of some sort, whether that's an offering on the altar, um, I oftentimes, I have a pomegranate and an orange tree over here on the side of the house. So I'll just go pour some water at the tree, you know. Um, you can, again, if you're doing a one night petition, so meaning if you're doing a ritual that only calls for like a single candle and it's only being burned over one night or a couple of nights and you feel like burning the petition at the end of the candle, that's okay too. There's no real right or wrong of what you do with it. But in my experience, to me, my petition is a visual, psychological, and emotional reminder of the things that I want to manifest. So I keep it on my space, and I keep working with it until the things that I've asked for have come. I also like to go back and reflect on my petitions. I did a petition back in January. Um, I did a love spell for myself back in January. 
and petitioned a very specific type of person in relationship and he's manifested and it's funny because I actually well that's another story I read the petition to him the other night but anyway I held on to that petition until everything that I wanted showed up so it's really up to you what you want to do with it I used to keep them in what's called a wish box and oh yeah somebody asked me to do a video on the wish jar I might do that later too if you have a wish jar or wish box or if you want me to do a video on a wish jar let me know um I'll do it live and I will put my petitions inside of a wish jar and I will leave it in there and then as things come to me I will take the petition out and I will do what I do with them um bearing petitions are only for when there are things that you want to keep close to you so I do not recommend you bearing your petition because when we break it down in the elementals of magic earth is the slowest moving form of elemental magic and what I mean by that is candle magic is going to produce the fastest results. You light a piece of paper on fire, it blows up very quickly. That's why people use candle magic. It's effective, it's inexpensive, and it works fast. Um, if you think about you put a seed in the ground and you plant a seed, it's going to be three, four weeks before you even get a sprout to happen, let alone growing a tree. So that means that what you're trying to grow is going to take a while. So bearing your petition is for things that you are working long term. If I wanted a marriage proposal, if I wanted, if I moved into a home that I know I'm going to live in and I want to keep my mortgage paid for the next 20 years, I would bury my petition in earth. If I need something to happen in the next two to three weeks, I'm not going that route. Um, water is the third of the slowest. So here, here's how it goes because I feel like I'm rambling now. Here's how it goes in the order of speed for your results. Fast results, candle magic. Second to that, air magic. So that's your incense, that's burning your petitions, that's lighting your ancestor money. Third, banishing, moving away, communication or things that you don't need to happen that quickly, that's water magic. And fourth, things that are stability that you wanna keep, that you wanna work on long term, you wanna bury it. Did that make sense? <laughs> video to break that down further I'll do that too because that that could be a whole nother class in itself um I think that's it okay last thing I want to show you this is totally has nothing to do with petition writing but it was fun so I thought I'd show it to you anyway oh ah! so this was shown to me by my girl Janae Lucy Couture lashes my lash goddess shout out to her follow her on Instagram <sighs> how cool is this the Coloring Book of Shadows. Now, like I said, I'm artsy and I like to color. I'm still, I'm still really a big, I'm just a big, I'm a, I'm a, what was I? I was a kid witch. I'm just a big kid in a witch's body. But this is a coloring book, which is super cool for your children. And for those of you that are sitting at home because ain't shit open and you're stuck here, you might as well do something. Now, now the coloring book, forget the part that this is a coloring book. But the rituals, hold on y'all, this book has spells in it, and it has, I'm going to show you, hold on, don't click off this video yet, this is worth it. It has, hold on, I got to find the page. So it has, oh, this is the best, this book is amazing. So it has, if you're a newbie witch or you're a beginner, it has the basics of spellcraft in here, and it breaks down everything from the secrets of spells to your tools, how to harness energy. Um, yeah, outlines. This basically, it has a whole section on teaching you how to write your own spells, how to perform them. It has grounding and centering, casting a circle of protection. This book has a lot of very valuable information. Um, tips on meditation and visualization, how to create jar spells. It has so much in it. Um, how to close your spells, what to do if your spell doesn't work, that's in here. And let's see, oh yeah, so this is the section on writing your own spells. It has a step-by-step -step guide to that. Common types of spells, so it goes over candle magic, charms, puppets, meditation, sigils, lamps, jars. And it's written in layman's terms, like stuff the average person can understand. And then, let me see. 
Okay, so it has it has actual spells in it too. So I don't know if you guys can see this. Like, what does this say? Spell to manifest big things. So it has an entire spell in here and walks you through. It walks you through the pro like the tools that you need, the date and time to do the spell, how to perform it, um, banishing spells to let go emotional things, healing spells. It has so much in it, and it has a section for love, for banishing, for money, for abundance. Like, this is a freaking cool book. It has your color correspondence, so what colors of candles are used for what. It has your zodiac wheel with which element and what spell is associated with what zodiac sign. It has the time of day, so what time of day should you should be performing your rituals. I love this book. And, okay, I promise I'm going to stop talking to y'all. But I love you guys and I miss you. That's why I'm rambling. And then it has your book of shadow section. So the spells that you write, you can write your own spells in here and color them in. And now you have a book of shadows. And I just think it's pretty awesome. Like I said, I'm a big kid. I like to color stuff. So while I'm stuck in the house, it gives me something to do and a place to write my spells. And what I'm doing with these is the one, the pages that I'm coloring, which it took me like three weeks to color one page because I'm so busy, but... The pages I'm coloring, I'm taking them out and I'm framing them and then I'm lining in my living room. I'll show you guys when it's done. I'm putting all my, I have a little area above my window here. I'm hanging them all in frames and putting them up there. So I just thought I would share with you. This was on Amazon. Um, I paid 11 bucks, I think maybe, $12. I don't know. Wasn't that much. My girl showed this to me, so thank you so much for sharing your witchy tips. If you guys have any other witchy tips or any other things like this that you'd like to share, please comment below. I hope this video has been helpful. On a scale of 1 to 10, please put down in the comments how helpful has this been for you. Um, please share this video if you have any questions. If you'd like to consult with me privately, I am. I have reopened my schedule for readings and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, Oye, formerly known as Coach Kair Carter and I, will be back next week. We are teaching another class. Um, it's been about two and a half months since I did a candle magic class, so we will get back to you guys on that one. But I love you. Thank you so much. Please share this video. Please make sure that you're following my page, following me on Instagram. If you have any video ideas or some things you want me to talk about, um, now that I'm home, I have nothing but time. So inbox me with your questions. Uh, you can schedule an appointment at one ritual away, and I will be back to talk to you guys a little bit later. Bright, magical blessings. I love you guys, and uh, we'll chat soon. Bye.